Today on Madden 22, the practice squad will evolve as we get into our second season of the experiment. Hopefully we can see the team change a bit here as we sign some more practice squad players for year two. But I think we have a few players at least that we can count on moving forward and hopefully we can add to that in season two. Now there's been a lot of feedback so far about how I'm going to handle the draft. And what I want to do in this episode is basically not use the draft. I'm going to half the draft players and then I plan on releasing them. If we don't have any year two improvement, I will then look to utilize the draft in some fashion. But I started this series with the idea that I wouldn't be using the draft and just signing practice squad players. I don't want to go away from that already, but I'll give it another season, we'll see how it goes, and then we'll go from there. There was some feedback to just draft undrafted talent players. I haven't even scouted, so I don't even know where any good undrafted players would be. But these are also the players that are going to make up practice squads for the most part. So we're going to have a chance to add some of these players. It'll be fun to see how one of these draft classes helps out the series, even if we're not actually drafting. Brady and the Bucks have done it once again, winning the Super Bowl against the Baltimore Ravens. The MVP went to Jason Pierre-Paul. MVP of the league this year was Christian McCaffrey, Robert Sala, coach of the year for the New York Jets. Justin Fields, Rookie of the Year, J.C. Horn on defense. Now, what could we do here with the staff? Could I maybe add a new defensive coordinator? Like, imagine being able to add Vic Fangio. Let's fire Scott Jackson and see what we can do here. The system here is super simple, so you can just, like, sign him back. But... I think we could find a better defensive coordinator. I know Joe Judge is an option. Pete Carroll, he could be the defensive coordinator maybe. Now, it's not just adding coaches that have certain talents, but also you get a hiring bonus when you hire a new coach. And the less talents they have, the more points you actually get. Okay, so it doesn't let you actually hire... The head coaches to be coordinators right now like if I go to Joe Judge the command failed so that doesn't work I actually have to sign a coordinator it looks like so perhaps the best coordinator I could hire right now is Clyde Holland who runs a 3-4 defense I'm sure I could change that if I don't want to run a 3-4 but we will sign Clyde Holland to be the new defensive coordinator this gives us 76 points to spend when the season gets underway I'm probably going to spend those on Elliot Dishman. And now I get to go through signing literally every player here. This should be a good time. All right, we're on to the preseason now. Just got through the entire offseason. There's nothing more for us to do right now. Here are the top rated players. We have a lot more in the 70s now, but 72 is the highest we have on this team. Thankfully, morale is all back to 50. That's fantastic. All right, I think we're going to change up our playbooks this year, and I do want something that's going to help us run the football. I didn't really think the Seattle's playbook for us was great. So what playbook do we want here? I'm thinking about maybe... I think I want to try out San Francisco's this year. The Kyle Shanahan offense. And then for defense, I do want to stick with a 4-3. Let's go with uh, Minnesota here. I usually like their schemes on defense. And we can continue to work on the talent tree here for head coach Elliot Dishman. We'll work on the receivers with this one. Quarterbacks here, at least getting to level one on all of these. And then all players count as scheme fits during training. Absolutely. So that really limits anything else that I can buy right now but we can go to level two on some of these after I get a few more points one player I'm trying to develop a lot is Marvin Wilson I thought he was one of the more intriguing front seven players we had added didn't have like a great rookie season but I think that there are a lot of ratings in place for him to eventually be productive 
and at least be a solid starter. As a rookie, 43 tackles, 7 for a loss, no sacks. Really hoping to see some pass rush from him this year. He is a focus player right now. To start the season, I'm really counting on Jason Huntley to be our top running back, but we're also going to see who is available now on the new practice squads, and hopefully we can just find a bunch of upgrades. I'm not exactly sure what to expect because the practice squads now will be mostly players from the most recent draft class. That might be better for us. Okay, we like this upgrade here for Hunter Bryant. Route running, catching, speed, 69 overall. I'm excited to see, hopefully, a year two jump for a lot of players. I think Kelvin Harmon's going to be one of the key players for us as well because he does have pretty good release. Not a very fast receiver at just 87, but good hands. Release at 76 is probably best on the team right now. I think he's going to be a starter. And we'll have to see what we're doing at quarterback. I will be taking a look at rookies on practice squads, and perhaps Cole McDonald will not be the starter. We'll see. Here are the stats from the three preseason games. Three passing touchdowns total, four interceptions. Looks like Jamie Newman outplayed Cole McDonald. On the ground, they gave a lot of carries here to Travis Homer. He's not actually playing for us. Not much here for the running game. I don't expect it to be very good. But Keyshawn Johnson, 13, 179, and 3. He easily stands out. We had like 12 sacks as a team last year. So to get 5 in 3 preseason games is kind of impressive. Shows a little bit of promise there. And Miles Hartsfield led the team at interceptions a year ago. He has another one here. Well, it's week one, and you know what that means. It's actually our off-season, as we can go now and see players on opposing practice squads and who we can now sign. All right, let's take a look. And the number one player right now, 73 overall Bryce Hall. There's Salvan Ahmed from the Bears. He was pretty good with the Dolphins. In uh, the 2020 season, John Hightower, Colin Johnson. All right. So here are the players now that we can add to the team. I don't think that we're going to be able to do anything at quarterback this year. Running back, we're probably going to make at least one move here. Cameron Clark, we probably end up wanting to add him. Not a ton of upgrades, though, it doesn't look like. So we're obviously going to be signing the best players here. Bryce Hall at 73 overall, absolutely. We'll bring in Salvan Ahmed as well for running back competition. Christopher Craig, 77 release. That's the best available right now. He is a 63 at the moment. Rookie out of Auburn. Okay, we're definitely going to sign him. I like that release is already at 77. We just have to work on the route running a little bit. Might be eventually an upgrade over somebody like DeMichael Harris, and he's six foot one as well. We'll bring in six foot eight tight end Donald Parham as well. We'll make the move to bring in Cameron Clark. Jack Anderson will sign him, best guard available. Davion Nixon, really a 68 overall player, but only entering year two. I'd like to bring him in. We'll sign Shaq Quarterman as well. I think he would be just a little bit better than Therese Hall. I know he's a little bit faster. 85 tackle, 87 hit power. Here are the moves we make to get down to 53 players. We have some players going to the practice squad. I did cut Jack Anderson, just didn't have room, had too many linemen. And here is the year two roster now. Cole McDonald still the starter. We'll see how it goes. He has 90 throw power now. We're back to regular morale, thankfully. We're actually getting a boost right now do we have like positive morale out of nowhere 50 i'm not sure what's making run block power better 
Must be something with the coordinator or something, but I like that. Hopefully we can run the ball a bit more. We didn't even have a 300 yard rusher for the entire season last year. We have, oh, let's go back to offense quick. I just signed Cameron Clark. Best tackle right now and an upgrade already? This is fantastic, 65 overall Cameron Clark. For the defense now, we have Bryce Hall as the number one corner, and then Shaq Quarterman. I want to see him as the starting Mike linebacker because he's just going to be, I think, our best run stopper and could end up playing a very important role for us. Oh, wow, Bryce Hall has an upgrade as well already. We'll go with a zone upgrade, 74 overall. I think we can actually be better this year. By the way, when are they going to get retired numbers in here? Like, I don't think it would be the toughest thing at all to implement. Just certain numbers don't work for certain teams. Let's go Bryce Hall number 28. Our goal, we're still trying to get to four victories. That's all we're trying to do right now. I think that's a solid goal after year one, going one and 16, and now I think having a little bit better team. Let's do this boost for the offensive linemen, make them a little bit better. We're upgrading our offensive coordinator. We'll go with both here. And then next time, when we get to 30, we can go with strength. And by the way, here is our defensive coordinator. So we have trench play. This is all tackling, block shed, really run stopping, focused ratings. Well, I guess this whole area here is, but this is tackling for all the linebackers block shed for your ends and then pursuit for the ends i would prefer something there for defensive tackles but he didn't have that stuff unlocked and then here on the right side play rack for safeties pursuit for safeties and catching all right we are going to get into a game today just not week one i want to sim a couple and see how things go and then we'll find a game to get into what do we have here? What's our focus? I'm hoping that we can have a more dominant offense this year. I think we have a good running back, Jason Huntley. I think our receiver situation's getting better. Offensive line's getting better. Gotta put up some more points this year. I would really like to focus on the running game, but I have more faith in the passing game at this time. Well, that wasn't the start of the year I was hoping to see. 45-3. 147 yards, Sam Darnold, three touchdowns. Cole McDonald didn't do much, only passed the ball 15 times in this game. Chuba Hubbard, two touchdowns. CMC had a touchdown. Big rushing day for Carolina. Huntley, 14 for 31. Terrace Marshall, 41 yards. Dan Arnold, 40. Kelvin Harmon had 38 yards for us. That's a really bad way to start the season. I don't think that we did anything right. We did get like two, three sacks in this game though. So that is one positive. And Javen White now with a torn labrum is set to miss the next three games. Wow, in week two, we actually bounce back and win. 24-19 over the Rams. How did we do this? Matt Stafford, 72 yards, 218 and two touchdowns for Cole McDonald. What is this game from Matt Stafford? That is horrible. We gave up a lot of rushing yards, as you would expect, but we ran the ball all right. 54 for Huntley, 37 for Ty Johnson, Ahmed with 11, Bryce Love got three carries. Like, this is my dream running back rotation here. We have four carrying. You gotta love it. Receiving Teron Johnson 49 and 1, Keyshawn Johnson 49 and none, Kelvin Harmon 36 yards. Well, we've already matched last season, regardless of what happens from here. Ulysses Gilbert the third picks up the interception. Great game. Another upgrade here for the quarterback Cole McDonald. Why is morale down already? We just won. Morale for him is at 49, so once it goes below 50, it has an effect in this game. 
We have week three against the Minnesota Vikings. It's raining in Seattle. We have a chance to move the two and one on the year. Now, if we can just score one more win over our next 15 games, it's an improvement over our first season. Here we are in season two, everybody. The Seahawks at home starting in the air and Cole McDonald swings it outside for no gain, actually a loss of four. Already facing a long third down and I believe that is going to be on us. Third down and 16, what on earth are these screen passes? Yeah, I'm going to have to mess with the game planning a little bit. The screens are just terrible in this game and they've been bad on next gen all around. Do we have a chance here stopping Dalvin Cook and the rushing attack of Minnesota? What a hit! Oh my! Well, that is Shaq Quarterman everybody. Do you understand why I added him to this team? Kirk Cousins on second down is on target. That's Alexander Madison, 17 yards. Dalvin Cook runs to the inside now, and the play is made at the 39. Motioning out Dalvin on second down. Kirk Cousins on the quick pass, and there's Justin Jefferson for a conversion. Cousins on second down, he's in some trouble here, and was there an eligible receiver in the area? I'm not sure about that. Third down now. Cousins at the 33, that's out in front, he missed, incomplete. Looks like a 50-yard try for Minnesota. This kick comes up short, and the Seahawks take over. Are you kidding me? The kicker that missed that, by the way, Corey Vedvik. The Vikings traded for him in a preseason a couple years ago, and they cut him after, like, two weeks or something. I'm not even sure if it was that long. They traded the fifth-round pick. He had a bad preseason game, and it was just another chapter in the Vikings kicking story, basically. Minnesota. Gave it to us though with good field position. Cole McDonald, no, don't go there. He got it away. What on earth was this play? Third down and nine for McDonald now. And time to throw. McDonald, no, it's dropped. Would have been a first down. That was dropped by one of the new players, Donald Parham. Gronk is a Viking playing with Kirk Cousins. All right, whatever, Madden. Vikings have it across midfield. Let's see what they do this time. I feel like our defense is getting a little bit stronger. Here's second down and three. It's out to Dalvin Cook. He's up the sideline for a first down. Nice to see him not just run out of bounds there. But in our recent Sims... I think we've actually had some pretty good defensive games. Cousins dumps it off with the play action, and that's Irv Smith. Cousins on second down. Double clutches and connects with Justin Jefferson, who breaks a tackle inside the 20. Come on, baby. Let's dominate today. Dalvin. Running left, has an opening, the first down, and taken down at the two-yard line. Let's go, baby. Cousins wants to throw, and he'll have the touchdown. Minnesota on the board first, and that's B.C. Johnson. All right, we have zero total yards. Let's try to fix that now. We run it right up the middle and nowhere to go for Huntley. I can't imagine running inside is going to work against Alvin Tomlinson and Michael Pierce. So we try the outside now. There's an opening. Redirecting, getting first down yardage is Salvan Ahmed. Let's go, let's go. 
Play fake for Cole McDonald. Does he know the pressure's there? He is sacked by DJ Wanham. Losing too many yards. There's a catch on the outside and almost getting away. That's Kelvin Harmon, number six. We go to third and seven to begin the second quarter. And McDonald sails deep down the sideline. It's intercepted. What a catch by Harrison Smith. I thought we might actually have that one. No way. Come on. Teron Johnson, the intended receiver. We haven't had one of these deep balls go our way in a while. And the wait will continue. I gotta say, that was a pretty sweet play. Let's sim a little bit now in this one. Just one play. 25 yards Hunter Bryant after we forced Minnesota to go three and out. That was all the plan. They intercept the ball. We have a good defensive sequence and now here we are. Not much here on the pitch to Huntley. We can take away this momentum here. Come on. Second down and nine on the outside off the mark. Cole McDonald facing third and nine. He's under pressure immediately. What is he supposed to do? Nobody blocked Daniel Hunter. Let's go, boys. We're on the board, though. Only a four-point game. We like that. Knocked away by Shaheem Carter. That's another stop for this Seahawks defense. Taking over Daphne for 11. Huntley getting eight yards. And then no first down, of course. There's almost no time left here in the first half, but... We have a chance to go and add some more points. 54 seconds on the clock. We have two timeouts, and here is Cole McDonald. He fires complete at the first down marker, and that's caught. McDonald second and 10. Pressure in his face. He throws to his left and somehow has an open receiver. That's a big play there for Jason Huntley. Third down's a bit easier now. Can we just get the quick conversion? Here's McDonald dumped off. Huntley first down. Use the timeout. Or use nine seconds and then call the timeout. Still waiting on some clock management fixes here, that's for sure. Can't really use the middle of the field now. We're going outside. That's caught. Can you get there, spike it, and kick? No. That was a missed opportunity, of course, and we get into the second half now. Minnesota here in Seattle territory, and we've held our own against Alvin Cook today. I think we've added a couple good run stoppers. Here's third and one. Can you do it again? Stretch to the right. CJ Ham in front. I don't think he got there. I think that's a stop. No way. But Minnesota's going to go for it. I don't think they'll run it again. It'll be Kirk Cousins this time. It's intercepted! He threw it right to him! Going the other way! Seattle's going to take the lead! Thank you, Kirk! Touchdown, Seahawks! Momentum has shifted! It's Shaheem Carter on the pick six. One of the biggest plays of the series. What happened here? Just completely off the mark. I think he wanted BC Johnson. Three and out Minnesota. This defense has some serious potential. I can't believe we're playing with a lead right now. This is weird. Don't mess it up, please. Come on, run the football. Do something well. It's a play fake for Cole McDonald on first down. And he'll dump it off to the sure-handed Huntley. But not much there. Huntley runs it inside. And he's met by Anthony Barr. Short pickup. Only 8 for 13 against... What I think will be a pretty good Vikings run defense with the additions of Tomlinson and Pierce. That's incomplete. Barr with a really nice sequence here. That's against Hunter Bryant. Wow, a three and out 
Gustin picked up a sack. Minnesota is having so much trouble moving the ball today. This is an unbelievable performance so far. We just went three and out. Kirk incomplete. Interception by Gilbert. You cannot blow this game. We have to win now. The defense is playing winning football against the Vikings. And here is Cole McDonald under pressure. He got it out inside the five. I'm not sure the last time the Vikings even won in Seattle. So this actually makes complete sense. Second and one. Bryant into the end zone. Two score lead for the Seahawks. Is that the first time ever in the series? It just might be. 17-7. Now we just have to avoid them throwing 50-50 balls to Justin Jefferson because I think those would actually work. Nice catch by Dalvin Cook up the sideline. Wow. There are some better turns up the sideline in this game. I'm not sure that exact play could have been replicated that smoothly in like Madden 21. So that is nice. Dalvin on the stretch. Nowhere to go. What's nice here is this Vikings offensive line isn't great, so it's more of an even matchup for us. Quick pass, and it's Gronk now getting them close to a first down. I want to see Shaq Quarterman make a play here, although I don't think he's on the field, actually. Third down, Cousins caught BC Johnson. Play fake to Cook. Cousins with time. That is caught. Tight coverage against Justin Jefferson, but he comes away with it. We are on to the fourth quarter. Can we protect this two-score lead? Minnesota driving. Dalvin breaks a tackle and gets stopped after a short game. Third downs have been really, really tough for Minnesota. Let's see if we get off the field here. They hand it off. No way. Dalvin just stopped him in time. I'm surprised that they ran it there if they weren't willing to go for it, especially on fourth and one. But Minnesota will take the three. McDonald going way back, but then he finds some space here, and he's just going to run it for the first down across midfield. 27 yards for Cole McDonald. McDonald now throwing, caught by Bryant, turning up, and a huge tackle made at the 37. Could have been a lot more. Inside, and Huntley has nowhere to go. We got to stop trying this. I'm not sure about a 50-yard field goal here. But third down and seven, maybe we get at least closer. McDonald dumps it off. Huntley, nice play by Barr. And it's fourth and inches. Austin Seibert, 44 yards. This to get the two-score lead back again. Seibert's kick is good. And Seattle extends their lead. 7 minutes and we win our second game of the year and move the 2 and 1 on the season. Kirk Cousins, oh he's going down. It's James Lynch who was drafted by the Vikings. He has two sacks on the day. It's third down and 18 for Minnesota. They've been terrible on third down all day. And there's even more pressure on Kirk Cousins. And he is sacked again. What on earth is this camera angle? Wait, they went for it? They didn't punt there? Okay. Well, they failed and we take over short field. Three score lead and this is probably done. Jason Huntley running left, and a little opening there. Five yards. Hand off. Opening. First down. Huntley drilled by Harrison Smith. 
Second and goal, Seattle. McDonald heads to the air. He swings it out. Ty Johnson has a touchdown. And Seattle with the three-score lead may be on their way to a two-and-one start. We're not only beating Minnesota, we are dominating this game. Four and a half minutes to go. Kirk Cousins, it's desperation mode now. Wow, nice move there by Dalvin Cook. It's fun to watch them around the sidelines now. It has gotten a lot better there. Here's Cousins on second down. Downfield this time. Leaping grab at the sideline. Adam Phelan. Cousins. In trouble again, lost the football. We got to him once again. How many sacks do we already have this year? We gotta be approaching year one's numbers already. Here's Dalvin, another good move. Minnesota is met with fourth down. Trips at the top, gotta get seven. Cousins in trouble gets it away deep to the end zone knocked away inside the five how about this defensive performance for seattle that play was made by the way by isaiah johnson that's ball game everybody the seahawks win stunning minnesota final score 27 17 they Added a garbage time touchdown, but it doesn't matter. A multi-score win in dominant fashion. And that's got to be like the signature defensive performance holding Minnesota the 72 rushing yards. We didn't throw the ball well. This was really all the defense. They put up a touchdown today and constantly got off the field on third down. I can't wait to see these numbers. I feel like Minnesota was like 2 for 13 and they were 2 for 12. Somehow we were worse. You'd like to see a bit more from our offense. And the passing game really hasn't gelled nicely in a couple of episodes. Since really the first update that we had here. But without a doubt this team is better. This is a much better football team right now. Four sacks today. Two interceptions. A pick six. How many tackles for Quarterman, by the way? Just the one. It was a fun one. I'd like to see him out there a bit more. But he's not going to be a sub-linebacker. That feels like a pretty successful episode. I wasn't expecting a start like this. Especially after like the 45-3 game that we simmed at the very start. That was a really, really good game. We've already surpassed year one success. Now, I do want to check on a couple stats because, like, we couldn't get sacks last year. That was a big issue for us. We had, I believe, 12. And already, in three games now, we have three players with at least two. We have seven. Now, Jason Huntley's only getting 2.6 yards a carry. I am tempted to give the RB1 carries to either Johnson or Ahmed and still have Huntley as the third down back so he plays a lot. It's just 2.6 a carry isn't going to keep you on the field. Kelvin Harmon, 9 for 92. We're not really throwing the ball well enough. We have to do a better job there. We're not turning the football over much, but we can still step that up. 31st offense, three games in. And the 16th defense. We will take an average defense right now. Two and one. We'll see where year two goes from here. What are your expectations now the rest of the way after this starts? Thank you all for watching today's episode. It was a really fun one. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back with more of the practice squad soon. Have a great day.